today we're going to be taking all of you extremely lucky viewers for an adventure on the high seas. And perhaps we'll even swing through a few sad old swamps and drop by a couple grim dockyards along the way. What an exciting outing indeed. If you're bored with all the regular looking ships and boring shaped boats, then I've got a wonderful treat for you. We're about to explore some of the strangest of floating objects that we could find. So without further ado, we bring you a carefully curated selection of the 20 weirdest ships in the world. Number 20, the USS Plain View. Now, first up, we have a vessel that was once billed as the ship that will change transport forever. But it seems as though it wasn't quite as spectacular as all of that after all. These days, it looks like a rusty old barge that's tied up on the Columbia River in West Washington. Not much to write home about, but it was once a pretty impressive boat. This is the USS Plainview, and it was built in Seattle back in 1964 by Lockheed Shipbuilding. It was a hydrofoil, in fact, she was the world's largest hydrofoil, that was designed to test out the function and principles of long-range hydrofoil use, which was hoping to have an impact on anti-submarine warfare. This boat was so effective at skimming the surface of the water at great speeds that people said that she could actually fly, and for a time, she kind of did. But by 1978, the USS Plainview was all used up and had been tested and experimented with as much as seemingly possible, so she was decommissioned by the United States Navy and then sold for scrap. The vessel was basically then simply stripped of all the useful parts, and her skeleton was left to rust on the river. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Freedom Ship for some reason, people have spent an inordinate amount of time messing about with designs for floating cities. Perhaps this fixation is because we know we're all doomed, as the sea levels keep on rising, and perhaps it's just because boats are fun. But either way, there's really no obvious reason that anyone would want to actually live on something that is basically a cruise ship. This is the so-called Freedom Ship Mega Ship, a design so absurdly large that it seems completely impractical at best and downright dangerous at worst. But what do I know? I just work here. Some bright spark imagined this massive monster ship floating city thing that could accommodate as many as 100,000 people, and it was presented as an alternative to land-based cities. The idea being that it contained all the streets and homes and general gubbins that you might find in a regular old city environment. This proposed 25-story high megaship would be 4,500 feet long, 750 feet wide, and 350 feet tall. But the main difference between this sort of city and the usual land sort of city is the fact that if you happen to live on it, you're essentially a prisoner. That's right, there's a reason why these ships are used as prisons after all. In a normal city, there are ways to get away from the intense, stacked-up feeling of claustrophobia that you may encounter when crammed in with thousands of other people in close proximity, but if you're in the middle of the ocean, where the heck are you gonna go? You might be able to circumvent the borders and live outside the laws of existing states, but if that's really positive, well, that's debatable. But you're also trapped at the whim of the weather, other ship dwellers, and likely as not an insane captain who may well take you hostage at any given moment. Then you'd really be up Ship Creek without a paddle. Number 18. The USS Zumwalt. The USS Zumwalt is a United States Navy guided missile destroyer, meaning that it's a ship which is equipped with loads of guided missiles that are employed during battle to provide anti-aircraft warfare for the naval fleet. What a fun one! The USS Zumwalt is a relatively new addition to the United States Navy. It was first commissioned in Baltimore in October of 2016 and was designed to have a multi-million dollar capability. This particular destroyer class is specially created for combat in deep water and is designed to support ground troops in attacks on land 
as well as the usual naval destroyer jobs of anti-air cover and anti-submarine warfare. So she's an all-arounder, and she's also got an appearance that's rather unlike any other naval destroyer that's come before. This angular, boxy shape is more like a spaceship than a seafaring one, and it's been tested for the ultimate poor conditions at sea. The vessel's wave-piercing bow is inverted, and the shape of the ship has been sculpted to reduce the radar cross-section. All in all, the USS Zumwalt is a modern warship that's been designed and tested to withstand contemporary battle conditions and provide backup in every arena of war. Number 17. MV Stuart J. Court Now, I don't know how weird that this ship is. I mean, it kind of looks like a fairly bog-standard boring old boat to me, but there you go. Back in 1972, when she was launched, the MV Stuart J. Court was the first vessel that measured 1,000 feet to service the Great Lakes. Back then, the vessel was used by the Bethlehem Steel Corporation to transport, well, steel and such. She's a very long ship, that much is true, but then again, that is the nature of these sorts of things. They need all that space to lug all the massive cargo junk around. But she didn't start out all long and elegant. When the bow and stern sections of the vessel were built in Mississippi, they were joined together without the middle bit. For her first outing, as she traveled to the Great Lakes, the ship was just 182 feet long and was given the rather unflattering nickname of Stubby. These days, she's still in service and trundles iron ore up and down between Superior, Wisconsin, and Burns Harbor, Indiana, if you give a ship about such things. Number 16. Sea Bubbles Sea Bubbles is an electric hydrofoil sea water taxi that's designed to do a bunch of useful transportation business without a lot of fuss or noise or pollution. It sounds like pretty hot ship in the latest fads department now, doesn't it? Anyway, they've allegedly designed the thing with a motto in mind, zero wave, zero noise, zero emission. It seems to me that the wave and noise parts might be some of the fun of being in a boat, but you know, what do I know? If nothing else, they've succeeded in making a boat that looks just about as boring and box-like as you could possibly imagine. And that's a shame, really, especially if you're going for being all super silent and a tiny bit boring. But then why not jazz things up a bit and make it a cool shape or put a snazzy paint job on it? I mean, whatever floats your boat, I suppose. Number 15. Ramform Tethys This is a bizarre looking boat. From the front, she looks to all intents and purposes like a regular ship, you know, all pointy and purposeful, but from the back, it's a much different story altogether. Yes, the Ramform Tethys, as well as having a funny name, has no backside. She appears to have been in a terrible rear end removing accident where she's been drastically foreshortened. But apparently this is on purpose. This is a research or survey vessel, and her shape and size is designed to provide a large and extremely stable platform from which to conduct seafaring tests and experiments. The ship was built in 2016 and flies under the flag of the Bahamas, operating out of Nassau. She's a seismic ship which is used for surveying the ocean to establish the best locations for oil drilling in the middle of the sea. Number 14. The Pioneering Spirit This ship is the very largest of the construction vessels in the whole wide world, meaning that she's used in the oil rig and gas industries to install and remove platforms in the sea. I mean, wow, we're really pulling out all the most thrilling ships we can think of today, aren't we? You lucky, lucky so-and-sos. The Pioneering Spirit is a monster machine. It's not only a ship, but a vehicle designed to maneuver and assist in the construction of massive heavy equipment. This ship is capable of lifting such extraordinary weights that it's known to have been used for the installation of record weight pipelines. Those pipes can weigh as much as 20,000 tons, and it's even capable of lifting entire platform pieces that weigh as much as 48,000 tons. So something that is really much more than a regular ship would look pretty different, that is a given. This vessel behaves like a ship when at sea, 
and has much better wave responses than many other crane vessels. She's got greater stability in adverse weather conditions and is able to make heavy lifts even in hostile seas and at any water depth. You could say that it can really handle its ship. Number 13. Motor Yacht A There are some big-ass mega yachts out there. It seems as though the oligarchs of the world have these things parked in ports all over the place. Motor Yacht A is one of these privately owned mega yachts. In fact, it's one of the very biggest in existence, ranked as the 27th biggest yacht on the entire planet. Which must make its owner feel very important indeed, I'm sure. What exactly does a massive super mega yacht set you back then, I wonder? Well, if the rumors are to be true, then this one was ordered in November of 2004 and finally delivered in 2008 at an eye-watering cost of 300 million United States dollars. Ding dong. But it's also a big one. At 390 feet and almost 6,000 tons, this is not a vessel that is for hiding away in some sort of shrinking violet. In fact, even the way that it moves is unlike other yachts. The designer actually set about to make a vessel that moved in a completely different way from other boats, because he wanted it to move through the water while barely making a ripple on the surface. Kind of like a whale. The interior is obviously as opulent as you would expect of such a fancy boat. There are mirrored surfaces everywhere, crystal is used at every available opportunity, and there are seven guest cabins as well as the master suite. Oh, and of course, there's a swimming pool and that all-important helipad. I mean, I wouldn't even consider going anywhere that doesn't have its own dedicated helipad. One is not an animal, you know. Number 12. Edda Freya With its extremely bright orange and yellow paint job, it would be impossible not to see the Eta Freya if it were heading in your direction. It's one of the largest offshore construction vessels in existence, and its job being to perform a lot of heavy-duty tasks in some of the least hospitable waters in the Northern Hemisphere. It measures 150 meters long and 27 meters wide, giving the Eta Freya a massive deck capacity of 2,300 square feet. The ship's dead weight is 10,000 tons, and she has the space to accommodate as many as 140 passengers and crew at any one time. This state-of-the-art construction ship has been run by the company Deep Ocean ever since she was delivered in 2006. The ship was designed and built for operations worldwide and has been especially engineered to perform tasks like cable laying operations and offshore constructions, but also has the capacity for use in performing advanced maintenance and repair operations. And she does all of it while dressed like a flipping clown. Number 11. The Flip Ship Next up, we have this especially weird and wonderful offering from the world of ships and shiz. This is the flip ship, so-called because she can literally be flipped to move from a horizontal position to a vertical one. And apparently, that's a useful feature. Not only a scene that's reminiscent of that in the uh, Titanic, but why do they need to flip the ship on end, I hear you cry? Well, according to the United States Navy, to whom the vessel actually belongs, it's all part of the ship's special skills as a research vessel. It's designed to flip up in this way because they say that the horizontal ship is not very good at taking accurate readings of the waves and the other ocean data based on because it's subject to movement in the water, which reduces the effectiveness of the measuring devices. And so they designed it to flip up and stand up vertically in the water. It takes around 28 minutes to flip the ship from horizontal to vertical, and then it's fully functional as a research vessel to take measurements of wavelength, density, and water temperatures, as well as the acoustics of the ocean and the sampling of flora and fauna. What a very fun and interesting thing. Number 10. The MV Blue Marlin. Well, I'm sorry about this, but the next ship is yet another heavy-duty vessel that is used to hoof stuff about in the ocean to build oil rigs and pipelines and other such fossil fuel -y activities. There do seem to be rather a lot of these sorts of ships out there lugging a lot of massive platforms and pipes into position now, don't there? But anyways, try to stay awake. 
I'm bound to have some more juicy boat action later on down the line. And we all just need to look at a few more heavy lift ships before we've completely exhausted that particular subject. Here is the MV Blue Marlin, a semi-subversible, heavy lift vessel that was specially built to move massive drilling rigs all around. It's a comfortable sort of working ship, which is equipped with 38 cabins, which can accommodate as many as 60 people, and there's also a gymnasium, a sauna, and a swimming pool. I ship you not. Number 9. Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin here is a very funny looking ship, and it's about time. Unfortunately though, this ship is no longer out there sailing the seven seas. In fact, it was sold for scrap decades ago. But anyways, this is the Soviet ship that went by the name Cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. It was created to detect and receive satellite communications as a Soviet space control monitoring ship. Completed for use in December of 1971, the vessel was then put to work in support of the Soviet space program. Its unusual appearance was the result of two massive and slightly less massive parabolic dish antennas that were positioned on top of the ship. By 1986, the ship was the largest of its kind in the whole entire world and was the literal flagship of communication vessels in the USSR. They could massively extend the range of tracking for the cosmonauts that were on missions in space and also for any unmanned ventures as well since the ship allowed communications even when the space mission was not over the Soviet Union. Shortly after the collapse of the Soviet Union, this ship would be sold for scrap and the rest of the communication ships met with similar fates. Number 8. Kawasaki Ship This is an indisputably weird looking ship, a spooky looking vessel with a bunch of big balls on board. Except these are not balls, but rather they're tanks for storing and transporting hydrogen. What fun we're having here today! This is a Japanese creation of which was designed and built by Kawasaki Heavy Industries as a cargo containment system. The ship apparently offers the world's biggest capacity as a liquefied hydrogen carrier and each tank has storage space of 40,000 cubic meters. But for why, you may ask? Well, apparently the transportation of massive heavy amounts of hydrogen in a liquid form is not only a tricky thing to do, but it's also kind of dangerous. These clever nerds at Kawasaki have developed a system in which the stuff is kept stable and safe for transportation as they believe it will become an increasingly utilized resource as we develop more clean energy needs into the future. Hydrogen energy, well, that's something they reckon is going to help in the process towards decarbonization. Number 7. The CLV Nexon's Aurora The thrills never ever end around here, now do they? This is only a massive cable laying vessel for your lucky old eyeballs. And goodness me, I'm really spoiling you today. This big red and yellow boat is a purpose-built CLV. That stands for Cable Laying Vessel, which is so fancy and proper that it's apparently been equipped with all of the world's most swish and advanced cable laying equipment. Yes, I know, it's too much to handle. Anyways, in case you were wondering what all of that yellow junk on the deck was, that's all part of its specific cable laying capabilities. These extra exciting abilities include power cable laying, bundle laying, cable jointing and repair, and even cable system protection. Mmm. This massive hulk of a ship was built in 2021 and has been sailing under Norwegian flag ever since. The overall length of this big ass boat is 513 feet and her width comes in at 102 feet. Number 6. Shikyu Next up, we have a Japanese scientific drilling ship named Shikyu. This ship was built to participate in the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program, or the IODP. It was designed to drill as much as 4.3 miles into the earth below the seabed. Apparently, that's where the Earth's crust is much more thin, and therefore it's possible to drill way further into the next layer, the Earth's mantle. And you can do it better from here more than anywhere else. In fact, that has been achieved by this vessel much deeper than any other hole that's ever been drilled in the middle of the ocean so far. 
Will these holes begin acting like plug hole if they keep drilling deeper and deeper? Will the earth actually spring a leak? Anyways, this is essentially what the vessel is designed to do. It simply goes around the ocean, drilling holes everywhere. Number 5. MPI Adventure Although this ship looks a lot like a kid got extra creative with a load of Lego bricks, it's actually a wind turbine installation vessel, if you can even imagine such a thing. That's right, all the renewable energy stuff has to be plumbed in somehow, and when the idea is to bung a lot of wind power bits and pieces out at sea, they needed to invent a ship that could get out there and then perform this task of installing and maintaining said wind power. Gosh, it's all so fascinating. I'm definitely not avoiding dropping off now. This big functional boat is 454 feet long and 133 feet wide, She's propelled by three big Rolls-Royce thrusters and six Rolls-Royce engines, which is so very fancy. The MPI Adventure has lots of accommodations on board for all the crew required to assemble a wind farm at sea. There are cabins for 112 crew and space for as many as 200 people on board. Then there's a whole lot of heavy-duty equipment like massive cranes that can hoist up to 1,000 tons of stuff. What a deep joy that was to learn about. Number 4. The Galaxy of Happiness With a name like Galaxy of Happiness, it seems that this ship is likely making some very confident claims about its abilities. This is a super swankster luxury motor yacht, measuring in at 175 feet long, and it can accommodate up to six guests in three super fancy schmancy suites. The boat was delivered to its owner in 2016, and had been given a fully swished out interior by the Latvian design house Latitude Yachts. They like to give stuff a very luxurious look, apparently. And the vessel itself has some credentials that may or may not mean anything to you if you happen to like this sort of thing. The yacht was built with a composite hull and superstructure and teak decks. It's powered by twin diesel engines and can cruise most comfortably at 24 knots. Her maximum speed is 30 knots, and she has a range of 2,300 nautical miles on a full tank. Or tanks of fuel, if you like. She has freshwater tanks, which can hold around 5,000 liters of water, in case you're especially one thirsty sailor, one would assume. Number 3. The Zipper Boat So, here is a boat that is exactly what the name suggests. The boat is indeed shaped like a zipper fastener. The effect of this is obvious, isn't it? As it speeds through the water, its wake looks like an unzipped zipper. It's kind of cool. Is this the ultimate novelty transport? And what exactly would be the point of such a thing? It turns out that art might be the point of it. In 2020, this zipper fastener shaped boat made an appearance in an art installation in Design Art in Tokyo. It was the centerpiece of an installation that was titled Opening the River. Yeah, see what they did there? This also included a video presentation of the boat doing its thing and zipping up and down the river. It traveled daily between two places in Tokyo Bay and gave plenty of people an interesting view during a year that was otherwise fraught with stress and heavy with boredom. So that was nice, I should imagine. The boat was created by a Japanese designer named Yasuhiro Suzuki, and it's an art piece that resides under the shell of a zipper. Now, the artist got the idea while on an airplane looking out the window, noticing that a boat parts the water in a way that is reminiscent of a zipper opening and a piece of clothing flying open. So naturally, as an artist, he decided to turn this into a real-life object. Back in 2010, he debuted the small prototype of the zipper boat, and then modifications were made. He went back to the drawing board and came up with this much larger version. It measures 30 feet long and is split into two parts, the one half is where all the actual boat stuff happens, the other is just to accommodate all that zipper business. It is unique, if nothing else, though. Number 2. The Roller Boat Sometimes someone's going to have a huge idea, one that can seem like the absolutely perfect solution for all kinds of problems, but when it's made a reality, that idea may not quite live up to all the hype. You know, like Tesla's, for example. This is the roller boat. It sounds fun and I'm intrigued. It's invented by a Canadian lawyer, 
there was the first clue that it might not be such a solid engineering idea. Back in the 1980s, and the ship was hotly anticipated and hyped all to high heaven. Its creator claimed that the ship would solve a boatload of problems, including ending seasickness, slashing ocean crossing times, and his plan was to become a millionaire out of the whole thing as well. Not a whole lot then. Anyways, you can probably see where it's headed. That's right, the idea totally tanked. A large crowd gathered on the waterfront of Toronto's docks to witness a launch of the very unusual looking ship, and the hype had been enormous, so plenty of people were interested in seeing it happen. When it was finally brought out of its shelter, it looked more like a massive tank or boiler than any kind of seafaring vessel. It landed on the water safely and appeared to float well. That's the first hurdle that was completed. And the next goal was to actually make it move, but that proved to be much more tricky. It took a couple of days for the boat to finally paddle out of the harbor and into the water. It had no steering, so the man at the helm just had to let the machine be carried wherever the water took it. Still though, it was deemed a success at that point. The tests and whatnot rumbled on and on for years, and each time they seemed to get no further, and apparently could not achieve speeds greater than seven whopping miles per hour. Even then, the rolling of the water was enough to bring the vessel to a complete standstill. For the next decade, they messed about with the boat and tried even more stuff to make it work, but to no avail. And one day during a gale, the roller boat broke free from its moorings and smashed into the side of a steamer vessel. This was the final death knell of the project, which was then caught up in lawsuits, and finally a judge ordered that it be scrapped. Weirdly, nobody did it, and the roller boat just sat in deep mud in the dock for years, and finally disappeared in 1933. Number 1. The Siam Diamond And finally for your eyeballs, we have a fairly boring big boat that's apparently really good at all the modern requirements of low emissions and low fuel consumption and extra safety for all of those crew and cargo on board. Good for this ship, I suppose. It's a vessel that's equipped with a high-capacity gantry crane, which is used for anchor and cargo handling, and apparently, so they claim, it means a safer work environment for its crew. But that's about all there is to say about this particular vessel, so there you go, I suppose. 